When you have a small shop and you're tight on space, you have to be creative with how you store your tools. So today I'm making this flip top cart that holds three of my bench top power tools. Because I'm using this for three tools, it took about a full sheet and a half of three quarter plywood. If you wanna just use it for two tools, you might be able to get away with just a full sheet. After breaking down the main parts, I cut notches on the top of the two side pieces that will act as positive stops for the flip top. This will become clear later on in the video. Next, I drill a hole in each side piece, and this will be the pivot point. Then I can attach the sides to the bottom by pre-drilling and screwing directly through the sides into the bottom piece. This entire cart would be slightly stronger if I made the bottom piece a little bit wider and sat the two side pieces on top of it but I made a mistake while cutting my pieces, so I have to roll with this. Speaking of rolling, of course I had to add casters to the bottom of this. One last thing to do on the sides is to add this small section of pipe into the holes. This will prevent wear on the plywood from the black pipe that I'll be using as the pivot mechanism. Off camera, I ripped the two x four in half, and here I'm drilling a hole directly in the center of it for the black pipe to pass through. These pieces are what hold everything together and add strength to the top. One tip you'll see me use a lot in this video is adding clamps on the side pieces to keep things from moving and act as an extra set of hands. With the bottom piece in place, I can clamp it to the supports and give it a spin. Now that I know it works properly and it's all lined up, I can add the screws. This black pipe is what allows everything to spin, but I need to cut it down to add a very useful feature. And for that, I'm just using a cutting disc on a Dremel. With that cut, I can put it back in place, but add a T-connector on one end. This is where the three outlet short extension cord will pass through. But first I need to cut off the plug. And don't worry, this blade was far away from my fingers. The camera angle just looks like I almost cut them off. <laughs> then I can fish it through the T connector and add a short section of pipe so the pipe can reach the other side piece. I made these simple end caps to keep the pipe in place so it won't slide out from the ends. One has this stepped hole to keep the pipe in but allowed the cord to pass through it. Then I added a plug on the end of the cord and 
One thing to note is when you're adding this plug, the black wire goes to the gold screw and the white wire goes to the silver screw. Of course, green is ground and then I can close this all up. And the cap on the other side gets attached the same way. The first tool I'm adding is my planer, and I made sure to clean all of the dust off. Well, I guess I missed a spot. Once I got it in place, I traced the hole locations for the bolts, and also around each corner to make it easier to align back into the same spot. Then I can drill the holes, put the planer back in place, and drop a bolt into each corner, fixing these bolts in place with a fender washer and a nut through the bottom. I also drill the hole in the back so that I can fish the cable through and plug it into the short extension cord. This was the very first flip that had some weight on it, so I was being very cautious, but it was surprisingly very smooth, and it'll be even smoother once I add weight to the other side of this. Next, I put the top in place and I can mark out the hole locations for the sander. This was a little tricky because the sander actually has some threaded holes in the bottom rather than through holes like the planer. So I just had to be a little more precise and mark these out accurately. While drilling these, I accidentally hit the planer cord, but luckily I just ripped a little bit of the housing and it isn't something a little bit of electrical tape can't fix. Because this sander has threaded holes that allow you to bolt directly into it, and it is very heavy, it was a little tricky figuring out the safest way to do this. This is the best thing that I could come up with, where the majority of the weight is on my bench and it's sticking out just far enough so that I can add the bolts through the bottom. If you have a better way of doing this, let me know in the comments. With all the bolts tightened up, I can plug in the cord and put the top in place. On the other side, I'm adding my jointer and I'm passing its cord through the same hole as the sander. Plugging this in was a bit of a challenge, but I used a block to hold the area open enough to put my ham through and plug it in. This jointer is much lighter than the other tools, so I just use some long screws to hold it down. I made these small covers to help keep dust from getting into the hole and potentially being a fire hazard. With all of this weight and movement, I needed to add some pieces to help with stability and keep the entire thing from racking. I added a piece of plywood on the front and back using pocket holes to screw it down into the bottom and using these long three inch screws directly through the sides into that piece. It would have been best to add these earlier in the build, but I wanted them to be as tall as possible without interfering with the tools as they flipped around. The last thing to do is to drill a hole through the side into the two x four support. That way I can add this dowel to act as a lock to prevent the top from flipping around and I added one of these to both sides. This flip cart helps save space and condense the footprint of three tools down to one. If you wanna save space in your shop, check out this playlist, which might give you some more ideas. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.